at five on Wednesday, September the twenty-first. Tomorrow is the first day of fall. Oh well, there we go. Last day of summer today. Yes. Um, and we have a very special guest, uh, Jersey Boys' is Nicholas Stremmer, who is here. Yay! Love Jersey Boys. We're we gonna miss Jersey you, Jersey Boys. Boys. We're gonna miss you. So we're gonna have a good Jersey Boys chat in a bit. So let's whip through the news, Beth. Let's. Oh, you want me to whip through whip it? Whip through right. the news. Crack that whip on me, will ah. you? Reed Bernie, Tony winner. Tony Reed winner. Reed Bernie of the Humans fame is going to star in a play by Tracy Letts, who everyone knows from August Osage County, at Second Stage. It's called Man from Nebraska. I'm excited for that, Tracy well, Letts. Yeah, and that's from January. That's so we don't January. know. At the moment, Humans is scheduled to uh, end on Broadway in January. Don't quite know what's going to happen to it after that. But, but Reed Bernie is definitely Reed moving Bernie on. Reed Bernie is definitely moving that's on. Right. He's R been with the show a long time, though. He has since so, the beginning. That's a real yeah. family in the humans. Absolutely. Great group of people. Okay, Veronica, Veronica Dunn. I think I'm a bit old to know all about Veronica Dunn. Well, I'm older than you are, mm. so that makes me feel terrific. So Veronica okay. Dunn from Disney's Casey, Casey Undercover. Undercover. I'm sure you know what that means. We're getting smiles in the room. Um, she's going to be Roxy Hart and all that jazz. All starting that jazz. from October, October 17th through, through November 26th. So we've got six weeks to see Veronica Dunn. Start her sounds, stuff. She's like she's got a musical theatre background, so she's done lots of musical theatre before. And the wise doesn't know what they're doing. Like, Roxy Hart. Yeah. Best part ever. All um, good. Oh, we have the complete cast of Hairspray Live now. We do. Shayna Steele, who is very familiar with Hairspray, is in it. And Billy Eichner, has, the comedian, Billy Eichner, Difficult People, Billy Eichner, has joined the show. The one problem with him doing the show means that we can't watch his funny comments on social media. He will not be live tweeting. Well, maybe back maybe. That's not a very big part. You maybe. never know. You, you never, never know. know. So that's December 7th. We'll all be watching the Com nicest kids in town. Coverage. Complete coverage. Complete coverage going on over here. Complete now. coverage. Adam Driver is looking yes. to come back to Broadway. So he was on Broadway twice, both roundabout productions. He's a Star Wars baddie. You know who I'm talking about. You know who Adam Driver is? Yes. You watch know girls. Yeah. You know who Adam Driver is? You've seen him shirtless a yeah. lot. Um, he is looking to, speaking of shirtless, He's considering Streetcar Named Desire. Yeah. Little and Stanley Kowalski. And that news comes from Sam Gold. So, I don't know. Right. The Tony winner. Tony winning director. Yes. Uh, all good. Okay, so this is fun. Every year they do like the most produced plays around mm -hmm. the country. A lot of puppets going around this country right now. With yeah. Hand of God, a lot of really dirty puppets. But followed by my one of my favourite plays of last season, season four, Constellations. I love that. Play. Now, Jake Gyllenhaal's not in all these productions, but nevertheless, it's very well <laughs> produced. Uh, there's the first trailer of the Merrily We Roll Along documentary. Oh, that looks so good. Have you seen the trailer? I love, this is like my Obsessed. favourite show ever. Obsessed. One of them. So that's going to be amazing. And what else is the it? Hamilton, Hamilton teaser? So the Hamilton documentary is coming out next month. There's a 30 second teaser up. That's at the end of Odds and Ends today. Amazing. Mandy Gonzalez. Oh my gosh, she's so nice. Mandy Gonzalez is on Show People. She talks about Michael Crawford. You may have heard of him in a show that has a lot of heads and legs, that show. <laughs> Although not the one she was in with him. He, she talks about In the Heights. <laughs> she talks about, oh, just everything. everything. Just her, she was a backup singer for Bette Midler, and Bette Midler sent her her very first telegram. Really, really I cool love stuff. That. And now she's Angelica Schuyler in Hamilton. So there you go, and the Broadway.com show is up. But I'm going to get out of here because there's a Jersey boy here. I do, absolutely. There's Jersey boy in the house. Bye, Beth. In the house. I think in the house. Mr. Okay. Stromart is here. Hello. Hello. You're back. Yes. Tommy DeVito. Yes, oops. Oh, and last night was your first night back on Broadway. Yes, it was. For how long? How long? Six months ago, I left. Uh, I, uh, yeah, Richard Blake came back six months ago in March, and then uh, had six months. I went off, got married, uh, had a lovely honeymoon. Congratulations. Thank you very much, and now I'm back. Did you remember your lines? Uh, yes, I, I almost okay? did not. Yes, it was good. I mean, how does the putting process go? Because seriously, if you, you've, you've done the show a long time, you've yeah. done it on Broadway, you've done it on tour, you've been to some incredible places on tour, mm -hmm. which we'll talk about. But how does it, I mean, were they all in your head or do you have to relearn the script? How does yeah, it no, I, I, you know, we had a, a couple of, a few rehearsals. I had about a, a week's rehearsal since I had done it already on Broadway. They were like, yeah, you don't need much. They're like, yeah, okay, yeah. that'll be fine. So I watched the show a few times. Okay. Um, had a couple of rehearsals on stage Thursday, Friday, put in. And yeah, it was like riding a bike. Essentially, I just like closed my eyes and it just, my body took me and yeah, it was great. Muscle memory, both in the brain exactly. and in the body. Exactly. Now, so we've got until January the 15th, everybody, mm -hmm. to go That's and right. see Jersey Boys. Now, you've done this once before. You were in the closing cast of Mary Poppins, is that I right? Was, yes, I was brilliant. It's a, and Leslie Margarita was talking about this recently as well. It's actually a very special experience mm. being in a closing cast, it is. isn't it? Yeah, to say you're the, the closing cast, the last person yeah. to play that role in, on Broadway in that original this show, it's, 
very magical. And it's everybody comes back and sees it yeah. and they're very nostalgic. They're like, Oh, it's the last time we didn't see it yeah. before the revival, who God knows when that will be, you know. And the audiences, I mean, you know, more and more people go and then you've obviously got the closing night, which yeah. on some levels I've done a few closing nights, so it's a bit like going to an opening night. It, yeah, it really is. Um, I went to the closing night of Mamma Mia oh. and they had a lot of cars, so this will happen to you. Um, previous production so the whole of the audience kept singing along in mm -hmm. tune mm -hmm. it was like the most impressive <laughs> karaoke session you've ever been to yeah for Mary Poppins it was magical because all the kids who had played in the show uh, some on tour and the Broadway cast were in the orchestra so as the show was starting you saw this like 20 10 rows of like 45 kids who had played the Michael and Jane bands oh, wow. throughout the six years so it was just it's incredible also. very very special <laughs> moment and you've got Mark Bannister on New York yes, yes. now he's new I think he's completely Completely new to Jersey yes. Boys, isn't he? Brand spanking new. So though. poor guy's gonna run newbie. It wouldn't be nice to him, or is it gonna be a bit of bullying sort of on set? We'll know, see. We'll you know? see how nice he is. We'll see what see happens. See how that yeah. goes. That's actually good. It's, uh, it's gonna be pretty tricky for him, I guess, isn't it? As well. No, I, we've all I don't think it'll be true. Yeah, we've all done yeah. the show, but I think it'll be. F he's got a great rehearsal process, and we've you know we'll we'll all mesh and really create the show together as opposed to just like fitting him in this cog, you know. Mm. And so yeah, I think it's gonna be really great. We're very excited. Now, you've also been a member of another big musical family. We have to talk about Wicked. We yes. have to talk about Fiero. <laughs> yes. So, I mean, that experience, once a Fiero, mm -hmm. I mean, they're always going to be fans following you going yes. with their Wicked posters. Yes. Yeah. yeah? yeah. I, love, I love Wicked, yeah. I love when, Wicked. when did you get, when, so when were you in Wicked? I did the national tour for a year and a half, the very first one. It just started in 2006. Right. And then I played Fiero in San Francisco for almost two years. Wow. So, yeah. And did you adore being in San Francisco? I mean, I love doing the show. I'm yeah. not a huge fan of San Francisco. Uh, I love New York City, uh, Chicago, Boston. I'm a East Coast East, kind of, East yeah, Coast East Coast kind of Coast guy. Because you're born and bred yeah. in Canada. That's right, yeah. You need yeah. cold weather, do you? I do. In San Francisco, there's like fog. and I mean, it's a beautiful city. I love the architecture. I love getting out in like wine country mm -hmm. and Marin County. But uh, yeah, I had a great time. You know. And then when you were touring with Jersey Boys, was mm -hmm. there any favorites where you sort of landed and just had the best, most extraordinary audiences? Because audiences must probably change. They do, they do. Depending which state, even which town you're in. Yeah, there's a lot of expat, expat Jerseyites that are in the South, like in Florida and um, South Carolina. We yeah. were in, in uh, North Charleston. And all of a sudden, I say Jersey, and the crowd erupts. And I was like, whoa, wait, there must be a lot of Jersey people from who are here. And yeah, yeah. so, yeah, it's great. It was all yeah. good. So, as I mentioned, you're born and bred in Canada. Mm -hmm. When did you know? I heard that it was six years old when you realized you wanted to dance. That's right, yeah. So, talk yeah. us through this. <laughs> so, I'm, uh, I'm in, I forget, kindergarten or, or first grade. And uh, the, we all went to see a Fred Astaire and Ginger Rogers movie with the third graders or something. And I'm just like watching this movie, and I'm like six years old, and I'm like, I'm gonna tap dance. And for like a week, I would tap dance under my desk. And my teacher finally called my parents and said, Can you please get him a tap dance class? He's, he's driving us crazy. So thank you for the stare for inspiring me. And So there you were. So you first wanted to dance, yes. and then you realized you could sing. Yeah, yeah. And then I was part of the choir at school. I did some community theater when I was younger. At, at 15, I played Bobby Child and Crazy for You. And I, that was like, okay, I, I love that 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 was it. That was the moment where I was like, okay, I gotta do this. And your first job was Radio City Christmas Spectaculars, <laughs> right in Missouri. It's in Branson, Missouri. It's yep. Amazing. Yeah, I love Christmas. And what's the more magical than doing the Radio City Rockettes show? And they, so they had all yes. the Rockettes. Yes, and I was one of the dancing bears and singers, and it was just so much fun. Do you, do you ever go it. back to that show when you were here? I suppose you can't because yeah. you're on Broadway. No, I have. Yeah, seen it. I've seen it. I love it. Yeah, I've seen the, the different incarnations and. Seen the amazing every, everyone being happy and yeah. Yeah, yeah, all good. Now, Peyton wants to know what's the best life advice you've ever been given. The best life advice, yeah, that I've been given, yeah, just to just to keep pursuing my dreams and keep pushing hard and training to learn as many things as possible. You know, the more the more tools you have in your toolbox, the more likely you'll be employed to do things. So if you can only act, you only have that small window. So if you can act, sing, and dance, you have all this this range of what you can do. Mm. Okay, David wants to know, were you familiar with Frankie Valley music before you were cast? I'd imagine probably, um, yeah. You know what's not? Not I, well, I, really. I did know some of the songs. Yeah. Of course, some songs you're like, oh, cool, I've heard that before. Mm. But then to realize that all those hits that you hear in the show were by Frankie Valley in the Four Seasons, that I, I, I didn't know all of them. But yeah. I, I knew a few. You're like, can't take my eyes off you. You're like, oh, yeah, I know that song. What do you love about playing Tommy DeVito? <laughs> what do you love about him? So many things. So many things. Uh, he... he He's kind of has a bad rap. Like he, he's the guy that made it all happen, but he's the one who got kicked out of the band and you know got the band in trouble, dead and blah blah blah. But he had to be charming in some way and had to have some brains to do 
what he did and be able to bring people together and create and keep working hard. And yeah, he had made, made some bad decisions, but in the end, you know, he brought Frankie up on stage for the first time. He put Gaudio in. Why do you think Jersey Boys speaks to people? Because it has been this massive hit around the world, even you know places like London. Yeah. It, I mean, it's still running in London. I mean, it's incredible. It's just people relate to it. You know, if it's people who uh, are born on, in situations and they work hard and to achieve this greatness, and it's it, it relates to everybody. It has a story for everybody. You know, everybody can find a story or find like, oh yeah, if I keep working hard, or I think everybody relates to it. There must be something very special as well about doing the show in New York because you're so close to Jersey. Yeah, that's it. yeah, it's great to have like the Bridge and Tunnel crowd come and see the show and like to have that. You you can hear in the audience when people are from Jersey because they get the jokes and so th something pops up. You're like, oh yeah, they're from Jersey or you know. What about show. the accents? Do you feel a bit more under pressure um, to nail it? But you know, you've done the show so many times now. It's, it's yeah. I'm not going to try and do Jersey with my. You should. Accent. You should. Just, I really would love to hear that. I think someone's saying we should, do, we should yeah, try to awesome. do some lines. No, we're not. <laughs> no, but it, 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 is, there, is there a pressure? Because certainly when I go home, to, or when I listen to people trying to do British accents here and when they can't, yeah. I get oh, furious. Yeah, that's, yeah, I'm sure that's so true. I don't know. I think people from Jersey might be quite scary if they arrive and they don't think the Jersey accent Yeah, is yeah. Well, it's, it's, I think we, we had a great dialect coach that I worked on with every line of the show for like three hours. We went through the whole oh, really? script and so really worked to get everything. To oh, yeah, phonetically it. writing it down and so the more practice and everything. So, yeah. So have there been any on-stage mishaps? Our Live at Fibers love that question. <laughs> and how did you get out of them? Did anyone notice? <laughs> Uh, well, last night there wasn't a mishap. I, I kind of just like tripped on a word or something, and it was like, oh, what, what am I supposed to say here? Come on. But, you know, in previous incarnations of, 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 of playing. One of my show. favorites, actually, and Drew Seeley is going to kill me for saying this, but when it's we were on tour together, yeah, Drew, um, in Oh, What a Night, in the scene of What a Night, where there's two red couches, and it's the scene where there's some women, scantily clad women, um, he's supposed to come in front of us and like say his line and uh, something, you know, I'm, uh, forget, I don't know his line. That's what well, he says, I sing, I'm singing. So he, and he's supposed to sit on the couch at the end. Well, for some reason that night he went, he overshot a bit by about a foot, so he went to sit down and he missed the couch and rolled right back up and stood up and it was like, what happened? <laughs> Just you probably not very cool, calm, collected because people yes. don't know. I mean, if you, no, that's you, the you thing. Know, it's the like only you people who know. Keep going, don't you? Exactly. The people who know the do. choreography and the songs are the people on stage or the hard, you know, the people who have yeah. seen the show fifty times. So and then they love it when someone oh, goes exactly. a little bit. Oh, exactly. Oh, yeah. You're, you're part of that little that yeah, night. Yeah. Oh, I was there that night when. Yeah, it's awesome. Uh, so, yeah. Absolutely, yes. Now, do you have any dressing room rituals to get you into the zone, or can you just arrive and just do the show now? I have some music, I do my hair. The, the, what, the, what do you listen to? Uh, what, anything. It all, all changes from whatever daily top 40 to uh, some classic Frank Sinatra, whatever I'm, okay. I'm in the mood for. I love jazz and big band, but okay. uh, it all depends on the day. And yeah, do some vocal exercises. I do a little put my suit on, once my suit is on, that's it. The and I mean, it's there. the eight shows a week. It's a marathon, not a sprint, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it, it really is. is. Yep. It's, it's tough. So have you got any tips for anyone just, wanting to get into the industry and thinking, okay, how do I even do eight shows a week? You just rest. You've got to rest your voice. You don't, can't stay up late and playing rock band until four in the morning. Can't and party. And drinking. I mean, you can once, you know, you just once have to. Once in a while. Yeah, Something in moderation. Night, everything in moderation, right? Absolutely. Um, so this is the final stint of Jersey Boys on Broadway. What do you hope your final audiences take away with them from the show? I mean, just this this great story that the you know Frankie Valley and the Four Seasons they they made it through tough times and good times and they dealt with a lot and you know that it happens everywhere. Whatever success you're part of, whatever you know, be nice to the people on the way up because you have you don't know how they have to be. They're going to be nice to you on the way when you go down so there you yeah. go so thank you very much Nicholas Drummond thank you so much yeah. Live at Fibers for joining us we will see you tomorrow night.